Hi guys, Tommy from Manchester War Room. Another wee review we're going to be doing for you guys tonight uh, is a review on a generic compressor to use with your airbrush. All right, guys. So just going through through some uh, basic stuff with you: build quality, features, uh, and the most important question: is it worth your cash? Hopefully, you'll be able to determine that by the end of the review. All right. Just so you guys know, I have used a couple of branded compressors before. I've tried some of my friends out. Um, to be honest, my end result was I would just buy these. They're cheap to replace and they last and they do the job. Uh, right, so just to run through some stuff for you guys. Right, so, main thing. It's got a regulator on here. Alright, this is going to regulate the PSI down to the amount that you need to flow through your airbrush to get the correct um, the correct pressure for doing fine work All right, or powerful work if you want more pressure. Anyway, so here's a wee look at the regulator. You've got a wee, uh, a wee pressure gauge here that'll just tell you your pressure you're working at. On these, I don't know the advertised rating for these but I can tell you now that operating with, with the trigger down fully compressed on the airbrush I have anyway or any airbrush I've had then you're looking between 30 and maybe 42 is what you're going to be getting out of this unless you continually stop and start now this is because I don't have a compression uh, basically a, a chamber a storage chamber below the a storage tank below the actual compressing unit. All right, these are available to buy on eBay, which, as surprise surprise, is where I bought mine. You can buy them with the compression the uh, the tank below for storing the compressed there. This I would recommend big time. As a matter of fact, I'm searching for a compressor a compression tank for this, and I just kind of find one. Right, so we handle on there, pretty solid carry it about, there's a good wee weight in it, it's a solid construction yep, solid construction uh, all your wee grommets on the metal work to stop the cables rubbing against the body and fraying away you've got a water chamber here for catching all the water that gets built up by the by the, the hot air mixing inside the, pist uh, the piston unit now the way this works is, there's a piston inside there and it takes in air through these vents and then when that goes forward it compresses and pushes its way up and then obviously out of here alright um, I'll let you hear this one just now so this is the kind of noise you're getting out of it, I've not got my hose so it won't stop but let's see if I can stop with my finger right so there's me stopping it with my finger right so that's us sitting at uh, 55, kicks in at 40, and we're sitting at 60 just now. So, when you're actually spraying, you can maintain, if it if it's running all the time, you're going to probably be getting about 40 out of it, right? This up here adjusts the PSI, so you can take it down if you need to. And then as you can see, or well hopefully you can see, that's now operating at 30 psi so there we go, 30 psi it's working at and if I reduce this even further we'll get it down to 20 psi, it's actually quite sensitive, it's quite good and when it gets to about 20 psi, to be honest with this model you can't really get below it so if you require, now you can but it's kind of fiddly so if you require something that's going to need to work below that kind of psi range then I would maybe look elsewhere. Right. Now don't forget if you've got a compression tank fitted to the bottom of this, it's not gonna continue to do that. Alright. So that's the sound we're getting. Once you've selected your PSI, you just pop that down and that'll lock it so it doesn't turn. Alright, I'm gonna turn this off, it's making noise. On the rear end of the compressor there is a rocker switch, so an on off switch which illuminates on and off. You know when it's on because you can hear it. You can see the motor and parts inside there. I've never had to take it apart, um, but 
the likes of things, four screws, pull that out and the whole unit will come out pretty easy. Doesn't look very hard. Right, here's the ratings on the side here. So, I believe that to be, I don't know what HP means, I'm assuming it's horsepower. <laughs> don't know, I'd be very surprised if it is. Uh, 220 to 240 volt, 50 hertz, uh, 50, uh, 1450 uh, re revolutions per minute, 3.6 kilograms. Um, bum, 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 bum. That's your dimensions here. I'm just going to zoom in, guys, and you can actually just have a look at this at your leisure. So that's what we're talking. 3 bar to 4 bar. That's your length, weight, and height per centimeter. Auto start, auto stop, as I've just demonstrated. Right. <clears throat> Most important thing with this, guys. If you want to paint for more than half an hour at a time, then you need to get the big tank that goes on the bottom of this. It's going to let you paint longer because this isn't going to heat up. This heats up off a, off a, off a quickly. All right, so you want to get the big chamber in the bottom here. Basically what happens, these feet come off. You hit bolts through there. A big chamber goes on there. This goes on to the chamber, so and then there's a hose goes from where that's plugged in, and there, to the chamber. Alright, that's it. Now what this is going to give you is, it's going to give you air that's not as moist, and it's going to give you a longer spray time, and it's going to make the life of the compressor last longer as well, because it's not having to work as hard. Alright, uh, it's just basically topping up the tank every time you need to go. That's it. As I say, I will be getting one. Didn't think I would need one, uh, but now I do need one. Alright, so, see when you are using, you can see I've got a wee bit of condensation built up here because I've just been using it. When you're using your airbrush, and certainly this, your compressor, certainly this model, um, when you get, just when you're working away for maybe more than, I'd say, 25 minutes, then you'll notice that there is moisture in the air. The air is moist. Probably about 40 minutes or so before it starts affecting your paintwork. I tend to stop what I'm doing, take a wee break and do something else while I wait for it to return to normal. There's a wee valve on the bottom here. Basically the purpose of that wee valve is, when this is at pressure, so let's turn it on and get it up to pressure. When that's at pressure, and you've got a water bowl up, it'll sit down here. All you do is, pop that up, and it'll push the water out of the wee reservoir chamber. Alright, and you've got a wee filter up the top here as well. And that will stop the water, or it's, it's meant to stop the water uh, getting any further up the line, okay? <clears throat> Noise-wise, it doesn't really bother me. Uh, wife can sleep through it, so, you know, she's quite a light sleeper. Um, and if I'm using this at the other end of the house, it certainly doesn't bother her. We handle it folds down. I suppose it'd be quite good if you... Take the camera out. Uh, we handle up the top there. I suppose it'd be... Uh, quite good if you were carrying it about I don't carry it about so um, everything else seems solid it's a solid piece of kit again this stuff here guys if these companies whack names on them and sell them at five times the price they maybe change the regulator they maybe put a fancy name up here um, they make better quality rubber feet that's basically it uh, the, the cable on here is two metres long I'm not going to whip the cable out you all know what a cable looks like uh, I'll show you the braided hose you get with this. And it's quite a long braided hose. I think it's about two meters odd. Right. So two and a half meter of braided hose with your connectors at the tip. Not the best quality, but hey, I've been using it for that's about a year now. I've been using this. We rub our seals in there. Not sure on the exact diameter of the connections. Uh, I would say it's about maybe 14 mil, maybe 13 mil, something like that. Basically, that just screws on there. Right now, I've also purchased this, which I'll just show you as well. It's a second water chamber, and you put your airbrush on here. So basically, what this is going to do is this is going to allow me to airbrush longer and keep the water well out of my airbrush so this chamber here is going to catch the first bit of water if this starts to fail then I've got a backup and if you're actually seeing water building up here you know it's time to stop and take a wee break drain the hose let the compressor cool down uh, and, and start again again guys 
Uh, a lot of people have these. This, you know, six, seven pound, something like that off eBay. Definitely a worthwhile investment. Just make sure you get the one to fix your air hose. Um, your air hose and the one to fix your airbrush. This works the exact same way as your storage chamber here. When the pressure builds up, all you need to do is push that the wee pin there. All you need to do is push that wee pin in and the air will just come out with the water and that will help clear up at the inside of the braided hose. Alright guys. Uh, <clears throat> that's pretty that's pretty much it. I mean they're no they're no mega expensive. This airbrush compressor cost about fifty pounds. Um, but I have seen them out there cheaper to be honest. I've seen them for forty pounds. Um, a good way to get these is not to put in model airbrushing because for some reason guys selling this stuff know that we're willing to pay a, a good a pretty penny for our stuff so put in salon compressor or tanning compressor it's the same thing and they come with a kit usually they'll come with a couple of generic airbrushes good enough to get you started guys but they're not gonna uh, you know dare say there's probably a couple of guys out there that do use them and don't bother with anything else uh, I just didn't think they were good enough quality for what I wanted. Uh, so, you know, put in tanning or beauty compressor, uh, see what comes up, man. There'll be a few good wee compressors come up like this, but one thing I would say, guys, is you definitely want to get one with a storage tank on it. I didn't, and I regret it, and now I'm in the process of looking for one. And the problem is, because they're all shipped over on a slow boat for China or somewhere like that, they don't give. They don't sell the tanks separately. You've got to buy another compressor, which is a total pain in the backside. But anyway, guys, I'm going to leave you with that. All right, like, subscribe. Uh, if you've got any questions, I'll try to answer them as best I can. Uh, aye, what you got, guys? Are you running um, Iwata stuff, or what kind of compressors are you guys using? What's your thoughts on it? Get a comment bumped up here so I can see it. All right, guys, speak to you after.